Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And in this episode, I thought we would do a bit of a wrap up on uh, Harry on the 4,000 kilometer trip around Tasmania, how it held up, how the aircon worked, how everything went together. Let's get into it. So those of you new to the channel uh, will may not actually be completely familiar with Harry, but uh, Harry is my 1974 Porsche 911 that I have uh, backdated to look like a 1973 2.8 RSR. Um, I have done an extensive amount of work to this, and uh, if you have missed them, uh, uh, I recommend going back and having a look. There is uh, videos on every single aspect of this car. This is what started my channel um, about six years ago when I started building this car. So um, it's running a 2.8 litre. It's a 2.7 litre that's been taken out to 2.8 with custom pistons, custom cams. Uh, it's running 10.81 compression, RHD um, individual throttle bodies, uh, a link ECU, which I wired up and um, Harry is, uh, is my pride and joy, it's my baby. Uh, Harry, the name actually came from um, Prince Harry because Harry is orange and uh, has a royal purple interior. And uh, my 996 is named Archie because it's the younger version. So uh, that's where that came from. And uh, the, those who asked, 2.8 Luft is, uh, it's a 2.8 litre engine and uh, Luft means it's air cooled. So uh, how did Harry perform? Well. First of all, the first thing that happened the day before I left is the wipers died. So I was going for a, a week long trip of hard driving with no wipers. And um, I'd actually uh, been struggling with the wipers earlier during the week. Uh, I was having issues with the switch. Um, I fixed all the issues with the switch. And then um, the next time I went to use the wipers, as soon as I turned them on, they, uh, uh, it would blow the fuse. And actually, I went through and checked everything, disconnected the switch entirely, disconnected the washer bottle, and uh, as soon as you turn the ignition on, it blows the wiper fuse, which leads me to believe that the wiper motor is probably died or uh, one of the wires to that, which means I have to pull the, uh, the blower unit for the air conditioning out and uh, and all that sort of stuff so it is quite a bit of a task to get into it nowadays but um besides that that was the only major problem with harry on the trip i went for a week uh straight with no rain the only rain i encountered on the whole trip was the last half an hour of the trip coming back home uh getting here and uh as many of you will uh, will have seen, the rain has not stopped here for a couple of weeks and there's flooding everywhere and it's still going as you may hear in the background now. So um, I just parked Harry, I haven't touched it in a week. I've been back for a week and nothing has been touched. So on other, other things, I had a few issues bleeding the brakes before I left, uh, but during the trip, the brakes performed really well. The pedal effort is very high. Um, particularly being unboosted. I did uh, adjust the brake bias slightly. I've got the uh, balance bar there, so it's quite easy to adjust the brake bias. Just one of the first day on track. Um, I had a little bit too much rear brake bias and I uh, just needed to put a little bit more to the front and uh, sorted that out was really good. But the clutch is not great. It did go out of adjustment. I had to get underneath the car and adjust the, uh, the slave cylinder setup. Cause uh, those of you who don't know, I converted my car to a hydraulic clutch and um, the effort is still really high. It's a very heavy pedal and um, it sticks. So uh, particularly when I was in heavy traffic, it was horrible because it doesn't release smoothly. So it sort of releases jerky, jerkily and it's quite hard to sort of take off smoothly. So um, that's something I'm going to have a play with. I actually think that what would really help me is actually to lengthen my pedal slightly. Um, I've got room for my feet to go up higher and I sat in another friend's car who had a different pedal box in his car. The pedals were slightly longer and the effort was much less. So obviously, obviously you get more leverage. It does have further travel, but that's fine. So um, I might actually modify my pedals and make them a little bit longer, which will make it much nicer to drive. Uh, as for the seats, I was actually a little bit concerned that I would uh, find these uncomfortable because there was obviously zero adjustment in these besides forwards and backwards. Um, these are Sparco Evos, and uh, 
they were super comfortable the whole time. I did put myself, I have actually put some uh, um, microfiber towels in underneath the padding just to uh, add a little bit extra lumbar support. And I might actually sew some proper padding into the, uh, um, these foam pads at a later date, just one of these things on the list. But at the, for the time being, uh, folding up a microfiber towel in the right uh, sort of pattern seems to do the job. Sit the uh, cover back on, it looks, uh, you can't see it, and it uh, does the job nicely. And I actually found when I jumped in and, and drove both uh, the Boxster Spider and the, um, the GT3 RS, both of them had the sports seats, and I felt like I was actually sliding around in those seats more than these. This, this you don't move at all because I fit super snug in these. Um, and uh, the, uh, the GT3 sports seats, I was actually still sliding slightly from back to <laughs> side to side. So these were great and quite comfortable. Another thing a lot of you mentioned and noticed in the video is that my Speedo is still not working. And uh, that is true. Um, one of uh, the viewers, Roland, who was fantastic and uh, when I was having issues, he reached out. Um, this is the Speedo drive for the gearbox. So it's got a, uh, a little gear that I need to press back onto the end of it. Um, and uh, the, the basically the teeth came off and this came unclipped and fell back into the gearbox. So I lost my speedo drive. Um, Roland actually re-welded this up because this part is no longer available from Porsche. So I can't get a new one. And um, I have it here ready to put back in, but I have to drop the engine and gearbox again to do it. So I've sort of been putting it off and uh, just using a GPS speedo on my phone for the time being. And, and, and while I'm there, I actually mentioned that the taco is, is not great either. I do need to get the taco repaired. Uh, the issue I have with the taco is that um, the dampener inside is no good. So it, it, it reacts too fast and bounces around and sort of and sits there and, and wobbles. There is another issue on some older cars that uh, have taco bounce where they've got a poor signal going from um, the going to the taco, which is not my issue. My issue is just that the, the, the needle needs to be um, dampened a bit so that it doesn't react so violently to everything. Um, that um, is not an easy thing to do. I tried to do something, but it sort of gets sort of stuck and it doesn't work very well. So I'm gonna to have to send it away and get it repaired. Okay, and now the big thing that a lot of you wanted to know is how well did the air conditioning work? And um, I can tell you that it was fantastic having air conditioning in the car. It definitely works and definitely helps. Is it as good as modern car air conditioning? No. And there's a couple of things I can improve on this car that will make it much better. Um, for starters, this car is such a goldfish bowl, particularly the heat coming in from the front windscreen, which is very difficult to deal with. Because in this car you sit so close to the window, you get a lot of sun coming straight through and there's not a lot you can really do about that. For the side windows, one thing that I'm definitely going to do, and I, um, I ran out of time to get it done before I left, is I'm going to get uh, clear UV window tint, which is um, uh, can cut down on a lot of the uh, the UV coming into the car and really help cool the car down without actually making the windows dark because I don't particularly want dark window tint on the car. But there is a ceramic, almost completely clear tint that does help. And um, I'll let you know how that goes after I get it done. Um, the other issues I had with the, uh, with the air conditioning was that at the moment I can't get full fan. So um, my fan control, while I'm parked like this is fine, but as soon as you start driving, the, the, uh, the lever springs back slightly and basically turns full fan off. So the only way, unless I'd sit with my finger holding it the whole time, uh, the only way to sort of get constant fan is to sit it back on uh, medium fan so I've got uh, three settings, so I can set it on setting two and uh, it will blow the fan constantly, which, uh, which worked quite well. I only had, um, the hottest day was only about 30 degrees, so not crazy hot for um, Australian standards, but um, after having the car parked in the sun on a 30, 30 degree day and then getting back into it and cooling it down, it definitely made a huge difference. Um, the vents blow nice and cold. Another one of the big issues I have is that because this car is the older um, slider system, the slightly newer cars have, this top slider has 
two sliders on it. So it has one which does the, uh, which actually opens between having the vents and the, uh, the lower fans on and one down this end that just controls the fan. The trouble is, is with this system is to turn the fan on, you have to open the under uh, dash vents. So you're not getting as much through these vents. I find that I get very little through these vents at all. I get a, a reasonable amount through this center vent and a lot through the bottom. If I could leave this down here and turn the fan on, then I'd get the air coming where you want it, up near your face, where you want to cool down, not down in the bottom of the car where it's going to sit because obviously uh, hot air rises, so it's hot up here. All the cold's down here. It doesn't really help. So... Um, one of the things that Johnny at Classic Retrofit suggests, and which I will do, is uh, for these cars, the, um, the, the fan control basically is just, just needs to be grounded. So I'm gonna put a switch in, a separate switch for full fan, so I can actually leave this lever all the way on this side and just flick a switch and get um, the full high fan and the air con so I can have it coming out of um, these vents. And if the car gets too cold and you just want it down a bit lower, then I can switch that switch off and move the, uh, the lever just to, uh, to a lower setting and it will have it open um, down the bottom, but that's sort of okay. So I think with those uh, additions, the, the tint and the, um, uh, the fan, on full, I think would make a much bigger difference to uh, how it works. As I said, it did cool the car down after that, but it wasn't, I was not finding it on a 30 degree day that I was gonna turn it down at all. Whereas on, a, on modern cars, they're, they're more insulated, they're more sealed, and I think it keeps the heat, the, uh, the cool air in better than these old cars. So I think uh, it, it's, it definitely works, it definitely was worthwhile, and I used it quite a bit, and, uh, and I would recommend it. So um, I'm going to get those last few things sorted out, and I think the, uh, the air conditioning is going to be fantastic. Another thing I know a lot of you were interested in finding out about was my wheel scrubbing. So... Um, if you watched uh, my trip to Lufthansa last year, you will have seen that I had a lot of issues with the wheels when I um, hit a, a big bump, um, would actually come up and touch the inside of this wheel arch and it actually touched enough that it heated up and bubbled the paint. Um, it doesn't take much, uh, many, many touches for this uh, spinning wheel at 100 k's an hour to, uh, to actually cause enough heat to bubble the paint. Um, I do have very slight bubbling here on both sides of the car. Um, on this trip, I think I heard it touch very, very briefly, um, maybe four times on the entire 4,000 kilometer trip of hard driving on bumpy roads. So it's only the sort of higher speed and it's sort of a, a more of a, um, a sweeping bump where it actually really over compresses the suspension and, um, and it touches up. There's not a great deal I can do about it. I sort of, I've looked at a lot of people who've got um, uh, wide body, you know, turbo arches, which is what these arches are, um, and, uh, and sort of wider wheels. And, and that's just one of the things that you sort of need to live with. Uh, maybe the, uh, the Singer style uh, guards, where the Singer actually curves up a little bit higher, they probably get a little bit more clearance than these, which come out a bit flatter. Um, and... Uh, I've put bigger bump stops in there. I've tried to uh, to limit it, and as I said, it's. I don't think it's really a big problem. It's only more when I've got um, a lot of weight in the car. Um, as I said, I had a, a a big mate in the car, and uh, on on a, on some of these bigger trips, on a particularly bumpy road, I think is where it really becomes an issue. With just me in the car, not an issue at all. Not that worried about it. What I am more concerned about, which has been an issue from the start, is the wheel offset at the front. Now this is not so much of an issue as more of a cosmetic thing that I've never been a fan of, and uh, some of you have noticed it, and that is that this wheel sits tucked in quite a bit, and I can't currently space it out because as soon as I do, as soon as I turn, it actually hits the front bar. If I space this out as it is, it only just clears. So back when I was building this car, I bought these parts, which are fiberglass front guard, fiberglass front bar, and um, they didn't actually line up, and I had to actually modify this front bar to get it to uh, line up nicely with the front guard. The problem is, is that I narrowed this front bar thinking that these were what it should be. And when the car was stationary and I put the, uh, the, the wheel spacers on and the wheel sat out, 
uh, where they were supposed to, it looked fantastic until the first time I had to push the car well after I painted it and I turned the wheel and realized it hit the front bar and there was nothing I could do about it. So I haven't been able to run spaces and it looks horrible. I hate this offset sitting in, it looks terrible. Um, so what I actually need to do, this front bar, as I mentioned before I left, is covered in stone chips. There is still this damage to the front guard, which um, the, uh, the video I did back probably five years ago now, because saying I wrecked my Porsches, the, uh, uh, the title of the video, um, where I actually had this front guard sitting on a trestle on the headlight bucket. It fell off the headlight bucket and uh, the trestle hit up underneath here and cracked this. This crack is still here. This needs to be repaired. I need to flare these out. I need to flare out the guards instead of, so I need to undo the work I did on the front bar, widen it out, flare out the guards so that this can all sit the way it's supposed to. And while I'm there, and actually even before I do that, um, I am going to raise the front slightly. This car has a lot of rake, which I don't particularly like. The front doesn't scrub, doesn't hit anywhere, but it just, it just doesn't quite look right. Um, this rear wheel, I think this is as low as it needs to go. This looks good, but the front just uh, is, sits too low, and uh, I'm going to raise it up slightly just to give it a nicer, flatter stance. And... Um, and then we can fix up that front end as well and get it so that it's... I can turn the wheels and uh, have the wheels where they're supposed to be. Mechanically, uh, Harry performed flawlessly. Um, I did find that uh, my ITBs had actually come loose. I obviously um, hadn't checked them in a while since I'd put them in and uh, mustn't have tightened them properly. And this side was actually loose. But um, mechanically, Harry performed fantastically. Ran without a beat. I think with this new exhaust now, it's just opened it up. It sounds fantastic, as you may have seen from the uh, Just The Noise video, and, uh, and it ran so well. So many people were very impressed with how strong this engine actually is and how well I kept up with um, a lot of the much faster cars. This engine definitely made Harry uh, probably the fastest air-cooled there. The only car that was probably similar was um, Tian's 964. Um, C2, which is you know, a 3.6 litre, a nice uh, healthy 3.6 litre engine, so he's got 800 cc's on me, but uh, Harry kept up quite nicely with that. Um, yeah, I am super happy with this. Some people have asked whether I'm going to go back to the dyno. Um, I don't need to. The engine is is super smooth power delivery. Uh, it, it revs nicely all the, way, all the way out the red line. It seems to run just right. I don't think it needs to, um, I don't need to spend the money to go to the dyno to get a number. I don't particularly care what the number is. Um, there's too many variables in that type of thing. Anyway, it just, I know that it works and it works really well and I'm very happy. So um, with that, uh, hopefully uh, that's answered some of your questions. Uh, I am very happy with Harry. It is still a work in progress. There's always going to be little bits and pieces to do on it, but for the time being, um, it's good. Hopefully you enjoyed the videos. If you did, do the things, like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that sort of stuff. Um, if you uh, want to help us out, um, you can join us on Patreon and get to watch the videos a day early, ad-free. And um, remember, if you need parts for any of your Porsches, even uh, the uh, old air-cooled stuff like Harry, make sure you compare prices at PorschePartsByJeff.com first. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one.